Hello and welcome to the part two of my nature drawing series with the Blue Hill Heritage Trust and Open Arts Initiative. My name is Miriam Talloy. Today we'll be learning about drawing different textures and we'll look at various local amphibian species to help us. Again, I have set up a few examples to help us get started. These were made with pen and marker. I selected three amphibians that have different textures. First, we have the spotted salamander. This creature's skin is very smooth and shiny. Then we have the spring peeper. This frog has rough and bumpy skin. And then finally, we have the Eastern Newt. This animal has rubbery skin with small bumps. I made all of these using clear reference photos that I found online because I wasn't able to take my own pictures. So let's start out by talking about texture. Texture can be defined as the surface characteristics of an object. In simpler terms, it is how something looks like it would feel. This paper has a smooth texture because there are no bumps or edges on it. Something like a tree has a rough texture. Conveying texture through art on a flat surface is difficult, but it adds a lot of depth and realism to the drawing. Let's go through how different textures can be drawn. A good way to practice these are by separating your paper into sections and putting a different texture in each section. Smooth textures, in my opinion, are the easiest. You don't need to add extra lines and the shading is simple. The darks blend easily into the lights, as seen here. One thing you want to really focus on when drawing a smooth texture is the blending. Using tools such as colorless blenders can help give the drawing a really smooth finish. When the object is shiny, like this salamander, you can use a whiteout pen or a white paint pen to add bright white highlights to make your drawing look shiny. To draw something with a bumpy texture, like this frog or a toad, you can use small curves like this. Making full circles as bumps should only be used if you're looking directly at the bumps above. For small bumps, like the one on the snoot, you can use the stippling technique, which just means to use your pen and make a lot of dots. These are the three main textures for amphibians, but if you don't want to draw an amphibian, here are some other textures of different animals and things in nature. Here's an example of how to draw something like grass or fur. Instead of using parallel straight lines like these, make your lines curve and point towards a certain area, such as this. For scales, instead of just making a bunch of curved lines, connect the lines at the points so they look like they're overlapping. For something such as tree bark, instead of making a bunch of straight lines that are mostly the same thickness, Make your lines more natural and give them varying thicknesses. Feathers are very similar to scales, but are less geometric. Just make sure they're overlapping. Have fun with it. Okay, now that we've learned about textures, let's use our new knowledge to draw another amphibian. I've chosen this reference image of a gray tree frog. Let's go through the process of drawing once again. Let's start with our sketch. Firstly, when drawing an animal, I use these things called guidelines. Guidelines are basic shapes. Next, I add more detail and accuracy. So this is where you really, really want to pay attention to the outline of it and just make sure that everything looks accurate. As you can see, I'm basically just going over the base guidelines, but adding more joints and um, detail here. Next, let's go in and add textures. So I'm basically just adding in areas where these textures will be. I'm not being super, super precise and I'm not drawing each and every bump but I want to just map out the markings and um, all the different um, textured areas on this frog. So around the face, it's more rigid and around the belly area and the back, it's more of a um, bumpy area. And the feet, actually the ends of the feet are quite smooth. 
So here's really the final sketch. I didn't go super detailed with all the markings and the textures because I'll do those with my pens. So let's go on to the line art with my micron pens. I like to use a pen with a thinner tip when I start on my line art just in case I make a mistake because then I can thicken the lines and fix that mistake. So well, I'm going to just start out with the basic outline first, not worry about the textures yet, just so I get the basic shape of this frog and the textures on the body I will um, get to in a bit. Okay, so here's the line art. Um, I messed up a tiny bit on the face, so I used some whiteout to fix the outline. You don't want to use your whiteout um, within your drawing where you're going to be putting color because then the colors won't go on as well. Okay, let's look at the texture in our reference photo. So similar to the spring peeper, this gray tree frog has bumpy skin especially on its back and on its stomach, as well as a bit on its legs. So we'll use the curves, the unfinished curves, to convey that. So let's talk about a technique for texturing an animal. So the frog has bumps all over it, but if we add the bumps all over the drawing, it'll look very crowded. So I like to add just small clusters of the bumps so that the viewer knows that the entire frog is bumpy, but it doesn't crowd the image too much and still conveys the texture of the frog. Here's my finished line art. As you can see, I added the clusters of bumps in my drawing, and even though the entire drawing isn't filled with drawn curves, the viewer can still tell the texture of the frog. These clear patches are super important because if you're using color, the color will pop out more because it's not covered by these small black lines. Now it's time for color. I feel like using markers again today, so let's get started. Here's my final drawing. I had so much fun doing it. Thank you for taking this class on textures. I hope you learned something. Thank you again to the Blue Hill Heritage Trust and the Open Arts Initiative. This is Miriam Talley, signing off.